The story of Issy Sagawa is one of the most bizarre and disturbing tales of crime in modern history. In 1981, Sagawa, a Japanese man studying in Paris, murdered and cannibalized a Dutch woman he had befriended. Despite the overwhelming evidence against him, Sagawa was never charged with the crime in France due to a legal loophole and was instead deported back to Japan, where he was declared legally insane and institutionalized. He case captivated the world, with many struggling to understand what could drive someone to commit such a gruesome act. In this essay, we will delve deep into the Issy Sagawa case and explore the psychology and motivations behind his heinous crime. で、まあ、まあ、細かいこと言わなければ、僕の日本人の先生が、ドイツ語の、で、この詩を読んでほしいと頼まれたら、お願いします。もちろん全部嘘ですけど。そういう、うん、設定をしたんですね。で、彼女
the gun misfired when her back was turned. Though most would take this as a sign to give up, it only pushed Sagawa further down his rabbit hole. It made me even more hysterical and I knew that I simply had to kill her, he said. The very next night he did. This time the gun fired and Hardevilt was killed instantly. Sagawa only felt a moment of remorse before he became elated. Immediately after killing her, he raped her corpse and began cutting her open. I was able to cut through the skin. I'm a fool, so I didn't have a clue about human body structure. I thought that red flesh would appear straight away, but it wasn't like that. And this layer that was like sweet corn just carried on for ages, however deep I cut through. I couldn't reach with my knife, so I ripped out the flesh with my fingers and put it in my mouth. After I had sex with her, I tried to kiss her. For the first time, I said out loud, I love you in French, and I felt a huge shiver. Ultimately, he said, his only regret was that he hadn't eaten her while she was alive. What I truly wished was to eat her living flesh, he said. Nobody believes me, but my ultimate intention was to eat her, not necessarily to kill her. Two days after killing Hardevilt, Sagawa disposed of what remained of her body. He had eaten or frozen most of her pelvic region, so he put her legs, torso, and head into two suitcases and hailed a cab. The taxi dropped him off at the Bois de Boulogne Park, which had a secluded lake inside it. He had planned to drop the suitcases in it, but several people noticed the suitcases dripping blood and notified the French police. When police found Sagawa and questioned him, his response was a simple admission. I killed her to eat her flesh, he said. Issy Sagawa waited his trial for two years in a French prison. When it was finally time for him to be tried, French judge Jean-Louis Brugier declared him legally insane and unfit to stand trial, dropping the charges and ordering him to be held indefinitely in a mental institution. They then deported him back to Japan, where he was supposed to spend the rest of his days in a Japanese mental hospital. But he didn't. Because the charges in France had been dropped, the court documents were sealed and couldn't be released to Japanese authorities. Therefore, the Japanese had no case against Isisagawa and no choice but to let him walk free. And on August 12, 1986, Isisagawa checked himself out of the Matsuzawa Psychiatric Hospital in Tokyo. He has been free ever since. Today, Isisagawa walks the streets of Tokyo, where he lives, free to do as he pleases. A terrifying thought when one hears that the threat of life in prison hasn't done much to quell his urges. The desire to eat people becomes so intense around June when women start wearing less and showing more skin, he said. Just today, I saw a girl with a really nice dairy ray on my way to the train station. When I see things like that, I think about wanting to eat someone again before I die. What I'm saying is, I can't bear the thought of leaving this life without ever tasting that dairy ray that I saw this morning, or her thighs. I want to eat them again while I'm alive, so that I can at least be satisfied when I die. He's even planned out how he will do it. I think either sukiyaki or shabu shabu lightly boiled thin slices is the best way to go, in order to really savor the natural flavor of the meat. In the meantime, however, Sagawa has refrained from cannibalism, but that hasn't stopped him from capitalizing on his crime. He wrote restaurant reviews for the Japanese magazine Spa and enjoyed success on a lecture circuit talking about his urges and crime. And to date, he has published 20 books. His most recent book is called Extremely Intimate Fantasies of Beautiful Girls, and it is filled with pictures drawn by himself as well as by famous artists. I hope that people who read it will at least stop thinking of me as a monster," he said. Sagawa allegedly suffers from diabetes and suffered two heart attacks in 2015. He is now 72, lives with his brother in Tokyo, and continues to garner media attention. And in 2018, French filmmakers recorded the Tatalking. Sagawa's brother asks him, As your brother, would you eat me? The only response Sagawa gives is an empty stare and silence. 
Thank you so much for watching the whole video. If you had fun or learned anything do me a favor like subscribe comment share.